Hey YouTubers! Hi, how you doing? Hey listen, today I'm gonna do a, a one, two, three ABC deal on boats and I'm doing some talk about my little heritage boat I recently got and I'm gonna talk about my big 20 foot one foot bass boat that I've had for a couple years. Okay, that's, that's the first consideration. What kind of boat do you need for your fishing? Now, I'm kind of mixed. Down here in South Florida I have Big Lake Okeechobee it's perfect for my big bass boat. And then I have little ponds and canals just even behind my house. It's perfect for my little heritage boat. So what do I need to do? Well, in my case, I kind of need both of them because I do a lot 50-50 kind of a deal. But what do you need? Okay, well, budget's your first consideration. Let's talk about budgets for a second. These heritage heritages boats, actually I have about $12,000 tied up in this one. Uh, the new boat, the Classic Series, is another thousand or so dollars. But anyway, I have it all tricked out with the power poles, the jack plate, and a lot of things for shallow water fishing. Now, let's look at that. That's the first boat. Okay, the second boat, $12,000. Let's look at this really magnificent, big time bass boat. It's a 21 foot Z21 Nitro. Costs quite a bit more. It's more in the fifty or $60,000 range. Not only does it have an upgraded uh, engine, it has a 40 versus a, a 250 that's way fast, perfect for tournament competition. But this boat's set up for big water. I can easily go across Lake Okeechobee in, say, uh, a three foot, four foot wave if I kind of go slow, and I can easily make it. I could never make it across Lake Okeechobee in this little heritage boat. I wouldn't even try. A three foot wave would be totally totally too much for this boat the fact that i do fish okeechobee a lot would kind of eliminate the fact that on lake okeechobee at least for tournament competition and so on i'd have to have a bigger boat okay one other thing about a bigger boat it has power poles way different so for example look at these power poles here uh down both power poles go down to a 10 foot level really fast really quick really efficient both of them hold you in position on this boat i have a power pole but it's a micro power pole and to go down, it goes down, you see, it's a little slower, hey, it works though, it's a pretty good deal, it's quite less expensive, okay, uh, versus a 40 horsepower versus a 250 horsepower, this little heritage boat runs almost 40 miles an hour, <laughs> my Z21 Nitro runs 70 miles an hour, okay, now, along, let's talk about trailers, okay, trailers, the, the, the small little heritage boat has a single axle trailer and that's good if you're just going to be local and it's uh you know they're kind of low grade tires of course this trailer is way bigger tandem trailer i've even burned out a wheel or a bearing or a tire and been able to go with one wheel at least to the gas station so so a four a four wheel trailer is of course an advantage here now let's look at the electronics because electronics really make a big difference in a big boat on a lot of lakes in the in, in the south, uh, the big White River chain of lakes, the Tennessee River chain of lakes, you really need good electronics to fish the ledges, to fish the bass on the humps, the hills, the creek channels. You have to be able to have down scan and side scan as well, where you can see the brush piles and the ridges and rocks and, and cover off to the side, say out to 150 feet. So that's important to have electronics. Well, electronics are expensive, yeah. Okay, we're talking about several thousand dollars for a really upgraded system like I have here. I also have another big depth finder on the front as well. In fact, two other depth finders. You can put, I've seen guys with four and five depth finders. It's just a matter of what they want to do with electronics. I like to fish some deep water structure. I try to isolate those ledges and I try to see fish. My son Scott is far better. He uses the Garmin electronics and can can side scan and, and tell me dad he says look look there's a school of bass over there and sure enough they'll be i'm almost that good but i'm not as good as scott and some of the younger generations guys are just totally rely on electronics i'm old school i'm a power fisherman i tell you what i do the most and i do it well i'm a power fisherman i go out there with heavy duty tackle big spinner baits i do a lot of shallow water fishing i use my polarized sunglasses for example these happen to be ones that I like, the, the Flying Fishman series, but any good sunglass will do it as long as they're polarized. Get out there, look for that stump, that rock, that underwater grass bed, and I'm throwing a spinnerbait, a jig, a swim bait, a crankbait. I'm doing that a lot of that, so that's, that's a big consideration. So either boat would be good for shallow water fishing. In fact, speaking of shallow water fishing for a second, 
this boat has a really shallow draft. I can I can go out with this little heritage boat. I can get out and say 10 or 12 inches of water and fish. 10 or 12 inches deep. I can go way beyond where a bass boat can go. The guys in the in the big the big bass boats are stuck with like 15 or 16 inches of water that they have to have to be able to fish. I can fish five or six inches less water with these little small heritage boats. But the consideration is, can I get there? On Lake Okeechobee, I'd like to have this little heritage on occasion, but I can't get to those flats. It's too, it's too rough, it's too big a lake. So, so what's the compromise? Well, the compromise is you gotta stay with small waters with a small boat. You just can't go out on Lake Okeechobee and some of the other big reservoirs on the TVA chain, for example, in this heritage boat. It's, it's too small a boat. It's perfect for canals, perfect for ponds. It's perfect for a lot of things, particularly shallow water. In fact, I even use this little heritage boat in the shallow bays and the saltwater estuaries and stuff. So anyway, that's, that's a big consideration. Just where are you going to fish? Now, the other advantage with a bass boat is, of course, it's way, way safer. It has positive upright flotation. It has plenty of room. It has the capability of carrying a lot more people and a lot more weight. We're talking about a boat that, that can go in a two foot chop with white caps, you know, 25 or so miles an hour at a pretty comfortable rate. You can never do that in this heritage boat. You couldn't even get there. Two foot of water just way out of control for, a, for, the, for the small little 17 foot aluminum. So you wouldn't be in that situation. Okay, but I do fish Lake Okeechobee. I do fish the big tournament trails. And if you're a tournament fisherman, you pretty much, you pretty much have to think about a big bass boat like this one. You can't really get by on a tournament format with a small boat. I mean, it just, you, there's individual lakes you can go and individual places that are, that are shallow, for, perfect for shallow draft, perfect for uh, the back countries, perfect for the rivers. Okay, you, there is some application for a small boat. But if you're a tournament fisherman, in general, looking at the circuit, it's not going to do it. You're going to have to have a bass boat. Now, both boats have a jack plate. That's another thing that we're talking about. This, this uh, bass boat has a really good, way good jack plate. It goes really up and down fast, real high and good. This other, uh, this other little heritage boat, I have, a, I have a jack plate on that as well. And I'm not going to run it right now, but it goes up six inches. On the little heritage, I'll also have it set up for shallow water operation with a cavitation plate. And I put in a, a more expensive propeller. That's a several hundred dollars more than the aluminum propeller that was on there. But that propeller is really heavy duty. Now you're talking about propellers that cost money. You're talking about those big ones like on that 250 on this bass boat. That propeller is something. Now let's look at trolling motors for a second. Trolling motors are so cool. Okay, my Tracker Heritage boat, this series right here, comes with a 45 pound thrust Minkota trolling motor that's uh, got my Roland Martin with the switch prop on it. Okay, that's one really big advantage. The other thing I've added while I'm up front is I've added an old depth finder, an extra depth finder. I don't have it sit, sitting on here right now. This is one I found. It's, it's, a, it's not even uh, a current model anymore, but it works fine for the front of the, of the boat. So I do have two depth finders now. I have two depth finders on the Heritage boat uh, and so it's it's kind of like a bass boat. I mean, it's it. I have three or four depth finders on my bigger bass boat, but nevertheless, the trolling motor really rounds out the complement. Okay, folks, you're talking about a trolling motor. On my Z21, this is the Ultrex series. Now, what the Ultrex does, it's so so cool. It's way more expensive. You can hit this button when you're running along the anchor button. Say you're coming by a boat dock and you're coming into the wind and all of a sudden you see a big bass flash underneath your bait. You want it to stop real quick. All you do is hit this anchor button. Don't. The trolling motor is now guided by a, a, a satellite deal. It stops right there and it adjusts itself and comes right back to the exactly the same spot where you hit the button within about that far. And so when you're perfect for for saltwater fishing when you're going down a pass and the current's blowing and the wind's blowing and you got to go get another rod or you got to get doing something else all you do is hit the anchor you can run around the boat and do anything you want because you're anchored solid with the the, the gps system and the trolling motor just takes over automatically in my big bass boat it's a 36 volt system marine series marine and rv uh, Intimidator series. Now, there's an AGM series. AGM means Advanced Glass Mac Technology. 
And let me tell you, these advanced glass neck technologies, like these big deck of batteries, they are so much better than the old wet cell kind. These last longer, they're more powerful, they're easier to charge, and they just are so much more efficient. Batteries have come a long ways, and particularly I recommend the AGM series battery. And the DECA series is just foolproof. It's probably the best battery in the country. So that's my recommendation on a good battery. Okay. Well, we've covered a lot of the big features of these two boats. And you want my recommendation? What boat to buy? I guess with your budget, that's a big consideration. Whether you have twelve, fifteen thousand dollars to use for small waters and not go fishing in the big water, or if you can finance a really big boat like this big bass tracker, you know that's a big recommendation too. I, I fish tournaments, so I, I have to fish a big boat because I do fish big water. I love Lake Okeechobee, my favorite lake, and I have to have the big boat for that. So if you're really a serious bass fisherman, and if you can afford it, I recommend the big bass boat. But hey, who can afford it? Only 5% of the, of the bass fishermen out there can afford big boats. So 95% of the people buy a smaller boat. Kind of like on the, on the order of, of my little uh, heritage boat. So they're both a great value. In my case, I have both boats and I use them both equally as much because I love to fish small waters as well as big waters. So that's my recommendation. If you can afford it, get the big, big boat. But that's a heck of a deal with that heritage. Only, a, only like $12,000 for all that you need for really good bass fishing. Okay, so that's just a few of the rundowns on what's available in the boating industry. There's a lot more to it, and I'll go into all sorts of other stuff at a later date, but at least that's an overview of what you need in boat. Okay, like, thanks for watching. Listen to this YouTube channel. I'm posting twice a week. I'm posting on a Wednesday afternoon or evenings and Sunday as well. So stay tuned. We'll see you again soon.